We've all been there. Warming up for the gig. You see a trombone player from across the room that you don't recognize. Oh, that's right. Somebody's subbing on lead tonight. You introduce yourself, exchange a few pleasantries about where you went to school, what other trombone players if you both know, and then it happens. They say the phrase that no working musician ever wants to hear. You know, I'm not really much of a jazzer. I'm not really much of a jazzer. But I borrowed my friend's 2B, so I'm hoping it's going to be all right. You try to assure them. Yeah, man, it'll be cool. All along, knowing that your night just got a whole lot more complicated. <laughs> Okay, so what did we learn from our story? Hopefully it's that as working musicians, all of us play styles that we are more and less comfortable with. Today, we are gonna talk about three things that you can do to make your jazz playing and specifically your big band playing in a section um, more adherent to that style if this is something that you don't perform on a regular basis. So before we get into it here, I do just want to point out that this video is not meant to kind of like vibe out people who are primarily classical or orchestral players um, who happen to be showing up on jazz gigs occasionally. All of us do this. We all play a variety of styles and we want to try to do the best that we can. This is only to point out a handful of things that we can do immediately to help play this style better. Surely if I were to go sit in an orchestral gig, I would be the one who would be offending some stylistic norms and would have to be really careful of those things. All right, the first thing that we can do, and this almost doesn't even qualify as a thing we can do, but more of an overall realization we need to make, is that the horn you are playing and the size of the horn you are playing does not matter. And I shouldn't say it doesn't matter, but it is one of the last things you should worry about. It is going to give you the last maybe 10 to 15% of the character of the sound that you're looking for. And yes, we typically think in an orchestral setting, we're gonna play a bigger horn and in a jazz setting, we might play a little bit smaller horn, but these are generalizations. And really what you wanna think about is choosing the instrument that is gonna allow you to play in tune and allow you to blend with the section. Now, if you can't do those things, the size of the horn really does not matter. I would much rather play next to somebody who is playing on a big horn, but is playing really in tune and has good control of their tone so that way they can blend than somebody who is playing on a horn that they barely ever practice on because they're not gonna play in tune and they're probably not gonna have a good control over the blend. And so you'll actually get better results if you stick with a horn that you feel comfortable on. Now, if you do find yourself playing quite a bit um, in settings where a small horn might be more appropriate, just make sure you practice on a small horn or a smaller instrument than you might play in an orchestral setting so that way you can feel really confident on both of those horns. All right, now on to thing actual number one. This is the biggest offense um, that I hear when I sit next to other trombone players who maybe don't play a lot of jazz, and that is their articulation. Um, especially when we're playing in the big band, uh, articulation has got to be crisp and almost in all situations, you need to articulate more than you do when you are playing classical music. We want a little bit of bite on the sound, a little bit of zing in many cases. We often need to tongue stop notes. Um, and in almost all cases when we're playing in a section, we are going to articulate. We are not gonna use natural slurs very often, maybe on a ballad or possibly on like a moving eighth note line. But what we really wanna think about when we're playing typical section type of figures is that nice bite and zip and crispness on the sound. So check out this example. So hopefully you heard it all right there. Nice bite. Da, da, do, da, da. That's what we're looking for. We want to be a percussive instrument when we're playing figures like that. All right, thing number two that we can clean up immediately. That has to do with the inflections that we play as jazz musicians. This is scoops, falls, turns, all this type of stuff. Generally speaking, we want to use less of the slide and a little bit more of the embouchure to achieve these. Let's check out how this is going to sound.
Now, you'll notice when I played a scoop, I always started one position below where my target note was. So if I'm targeting to a D flat in second, I'm gonna start my scoop on a C in third. And if I want a little bit more aggressive scoop, I'm just gonna move my slide slower. I'm not gonna go all the way from sixth position. Surefire sign that we probably haven't listened to a ton of jazz if we're doing those big long glisses. Now there are places where that's appropriate, um, if we're playing kind of a tailgate style, something like that. But if we're just talking about general section playing, we want probably a one to one and a half slide position movement um, for our scoops. Now the other side of that, our falls, we wanna think about using our embouchure more than the slide. Right, I fell through the partials. I did not use just a big gliss. That is not typically stylistically common for this style of music again when we're playing in the section. All right, the last step that we can take to help work on this stuff doesn't really have to do about what we do on our horn, but maybe a little more what we do in our practice and how we spend that practice time. You have to follow through on improving these things. I can't count the number of times that over the years, different musicians have said to me, Sean, we should get together and uh, play some stuff. I'm really trying to improve my jazz playing. I wanna be a little more versatile. Uh, and I say, great, let's do it. Um, try to set up a time, crickets. Doesn't get back to me. Maybe bring it up again. Again, we just never get it set up. And while, yeah, everybody's busy, if you really want to consider yourself a versatile musician, you need to work on these things. I practice classical music every day. Even though I don't think I'm really all that great at it, I rarely perform it um, outside of a kind of commercial setting in maybe a pit orchestra or at a wedding. Um, however, it does great things for my playing. It helps my playing, and I just know I want to be that versatile musician. So if you really want to get better at this stuff and make sure that you are not the person on the gig who's causing problems um, in the section as far from a stylistic standpoint, you got to take it seriously and invest some time into getting this style together. All right, there they are. Three things you can do immediately to help improve your section playing when you are playing in a big band. Now, clearly there's a bunch of different styles. We've got to try to address all these things. I'm just here offering the information that I can as somebody who is primarily a jazz musician. If you enjoy this content, please hit the subscribe button, like this video, um, new lessons every week. So please tune into those and happy practicing.